choose a job, choose a career, choose a big television, <laughs> choose a three-piece suite on higher purchase, choose waking up and wondering who you are on a Sunday morning, choose your future, choose life. We're invited, sarcastically, by heroin junkie Renton, the lead character in Irvin Welsh's movie Trainspotting, to choose life. He goes on a bit longer, he drops a few F-bombs, but his thesis is clear. A bland, comfortable life without taking any risks isn't really living at all. In fact, it's a slow kind of dying. I'm a researcher and consultant in Meaning of Work. I've interviewed hundreds and hundreds of people about how they feel about work and how they make it meaningful. I've always been driven by this belief that there, there is an alternative to the life that Renton describes. And no, I don't mean drugs. I mean there's a way to make work work so that it supports living. And what I found is that when we have meaningful work, there are just massive flow-on effects. It makes our life more vibrant and richer. It can make us feel more like our true selves. And when I listened to the stories of all the people I'd interviewed, it seemed that life and death was exactly what work was about for a lot of us. There were just so many stories of despair and anguish, stories of waking up in the middle of the night with knots in the stomach, stories of feeling stuck, hopeless, useless, stories of our souls being crushed day by day. I was overwhelmed by the strength of emotion that comes out when people open up and really talk about what work means. But then there was the opposite, the finding of meaning. These were stories about joy, hope, optimism. These were stories about feeling triumphant on the way home from work. And they were stories, there were stories about becoming the person I'd always wanted to become. There was one glaring observation with all of these people that had found meaning at work. They'd all taken a risk to get there. They'd all stood at the edge of a cliff, faced their fears, and taken a leap of faith. And this was so fundamental that it's impossible for us to find meaning at work without taking a leap of faith and jumping off a cliff. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, that sounds like a big leap. <laughs> Do I really need to jump off a cliff just to enjoy my job? Well, yeah. And if you're willing to take a small leap of faith with me, let's explore it together. Meet Jody. Jody was a single mom working three jobs to pay the mortgage on her tiny house in the outer suburbs and make ends meet. This is her describing the junction between life and work. I'd get up in the morning and I'd have to put on my mask for work. And towards the end, I was really feeling the waste of it. Mm. You know, that every day I would get up and spend eight hours. I could be doing something that was important to me and instead I was doing this thing that just meant nothing to me. At 47, Jody did something amazing. She rejected this life. She quit her jobs. She sold her house, and she enrolled in National Art School. Now she's living the life she always wanted to as a full-time artist. And when I met her, she was the happiest person in the world. I was just so inspired by her. She'd really committed to her dream. She'd risked everything to get there. But before we all rush out and quit our jobs and sell our houses, maybe we should have a look at this leap of faith thing and see what's going on. The term leap of faith was actually invented in the 90s by the motivational poster industry. The term leap of faith was invented in the 90s by the motivational poster industry. Back then, it was mandatory to have a poster like this in every office, along with a whole bunch of other cliches. Success, teamwork. The idea was that this would sit on your above your desk and inspire you every day. It didn't really work very well. And obviously not, because this is just so trite, it's almost completely useless. And I'm kidding around a little bit as well. The term leap of faith was actually coined by a Danish existential philosopher called Kierkegaard in the 1800s. When he was wrestling with this paradox, 
of, having, of being a rational thinker and having faith in God. And this is how it works. This is the problem he was wrestling with. If you've got reason over here and faith in God over there, in between there's a chasm and there's no tangible bridge that gets us from here to there. We can't coexist in both places at once. And he tried to think his way through this problem because he was a devout Christian. How am I going to do it? I've got to logic my way over there. And he came to a conclusion. He couldn't think his way to faith. He had to act his way there. And to do that, he had to release his position, let go of his position on this side of the cliff in reason and leap into faith over here. So from a work perspective, let's use Jodi as an example. She was over here with a little bit of security. She had a house, a roof over her head, and a couple of jobs. And she wanted to be an artist over there. And she tried so hard to think how she could become an artist without giving up this position over here. She read every book on how to escape the rat race, how to make money on the side. And then she came to the same conclusion that Kierkegaard reached. She couldn't get over there by thinking it through. She just had to take an action. She had to sell her house, take a leap of faith, and find her real home. But that's a massive leap, risking everything. They don't always have to be this big. In fact, most of the time, they're much smaller than this. Yes, we have big ones like changing jobs, or starting a business, or making some big leadership strategy decision. But most of the time, it's the small leaps of faith that matter. Like putting your creative idea forward in a meeting, risking rejection. Taking on a big project goal, risking failure. Apologizing to a colleague for doing something wrong, risking your ego. <laughs> There's a few people in here who've done that. Now, these might seem trivial, but these are super important for us to get to meaning at work. It's all these little actions and these little leaps added up that, make, that total up and make our experience of work what it is. They shape our relationship with work. And this is where the motivational posters let us down a little bit. They just say, leap. They don't say, where do you leap to? They don't say, when? And they don't say, exactly how do I do it? So if we're going to take a leap of faith, let's examine the dynamics that are at play. There was another clever guy that was around before the time of Kierkegaard called Sir Isaac Newton. And he, he did some things with apples, and he invented some laws of motion. And his law of motion states, a body at rest will stay at rest unless a force acts upon it. There will almost always be a pushing force. If we're standing over here, what will it take to get us to move over there? A pushing force is something that we're usually moving away from. It's that feeling of something being missing. I don't feel like I have purpose. I don't feel like I'm quite fulfilled. I don't want to be the person that doesn't put their creative ideas forward in meetings. And these soft forces add up over time, and they try and push us in this direction. But according to Newton, we should already be moving by now, unless there is another force acting in the opposite direction, resisting. We are really, really, really good at resisting existential threats, like jumping off cliffs and saying sorry. And these, we all know intimately what these fears are. What if I try really hard and I fail? What if I sell my house and I'm homeless? What if I put my idea forward and I'm rejected? What if I'm just not good enough? And these forces are sneaky, and they add up over time and ingrain themselves in us over years and decades. At 17, Jodi was told by her teachers, you'll never be an artist. They laughed at her. What a crazy idea. Of course she didn't move over there. Of course she didn't leap. 
But being human is funny. At least that's how Kierkegaard and the other existentialists saw it. They argued that we aren't born into meaning. We don't pop out of the womb with a clear purpose and a roadmap of how to get there. We have to find meaning through our actions and our choices. Why did the chicken cross the chasm? To get to the other side. <laughs> no, it's not really a joke, because this is the most important thing in a leap of faith. It's not a leap in any old random direction. It's not actually a leap into faith at all. It's a leap into the things that matter most to us. It's a leap into meaning. But how do you know? How do you know where this meaning thing is? Should I leap towards it or not? Should I quit this job and take this one? Should I speak truth to my boss, or is that just career suicide? Well, the other cool thing about being human is that we all have this inner voice inside of us. And this inner voice is connected to the things that matter to us. It's connected to the things that we value and the meaning that we want to make of the world. Sometimes it's a soft voice and we can't quite hear it, but if we listen, it's there. It's over here on this side and it's saying, hello, I'm your dreams, be an artist. Put your idea forward. Wouldn't it be awesome if they went for it? We've just got to listen to it and trust it. So we aren't really taking leaps of faith. So may maybe a better motto, we should put our faith into leaping. Our faith that we can deal with the uncertainty when we get there. We don't need to have the plan. Our faith in this inner voice, not to know all the answers and exactly where we need to go at the end of the road, but to know the direction we start and to work it out as we go. Put faith into letting things unfold. And this is what Jodi did. This is her talking about leaping towards what mattered to her. It was a feeling of kind of being alive again. Yeah, it's scary. You don't know what's going to happen. That's kind of the point of life. To scare yourself. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> to do the things that you want to do, no matter how scary they are. And this is the essence of putting our faith into leaping. To listen to what it is that we want to do. To acknowledge the fears. And then do it anyway. We don't need to do what Jody did. We don't need to sell our houses, quit our jobs and become full-time artists. And it would be wrong of me to put her up here on the screen and say, she took a massive leap of faith and it's happy ever after. Because that just isn't true. Her big decision was actually just one small step in a process. A process of listening and responding one little leap at a time. And what we do need to do is to acknowledge that we don't have the whole plan before we leap, and we can't have it. Just have faith that that thing that you're excited about today, that direction you want to move in today, it's enough for today. So I can't give you a roadmap, but what I noticed and observed in all the people that had taken these leaps was that they did employ some strategies, and I'd love to share them with you. The first one, no regrets. It sounds like we're making up another 90s motivational poster. But this is actually a really great motto for putting faith into leaping. There's no point beating ourselves up about the leap we didn't take yesterday, because if we were ready to do it then, we would have done it. And the leap that we messed up today, well, we get a chance to take another one tomorrow. Relax our grip. When we're clinging onto the cliff on this side and we look down and see the chasm, it's really scary. And what happens is we tense up like this and we become cling to this side of the cliff more and more tightly. Before we can make any kind of move, the first thing is to relax our grip on the situation a bit. Take the pressure off. Just hang there for a little while. Let the possibilities open up. And lastly, freedom. This is something that Renton, Jody, and Kierkegaard all agreed upon. We always have the freedom to choose. 
we have the freedom to choose to take a risk and to leap. And we have the freedom to choose not to leap. But there's a risk in that as well. And the risk is we don't move towards our dreams on that side. So what will you choose? Will you choose to leap into your work, leap into your future, leap into life? Thank you.